It's halftime here at St. Bernard's High School. We're in the shadow of historic St. Joseph's Church here in Eureka, California, home of the St. Bernard's Crusaders. This game is tied 6-6 here at halftime. The Crusaders scored first. However, an unsportsmanlike conduct call as uh, their quarterback, Christian Mello, ran it in for a touchdown following that play, moved the ball to the 17-yard line for their extra point. They failed in it. The Timberwolves scored a touchdown on a nice pass, fourth down, Tyler Ashby, who on the drive had twisted his ankle. Incidentally, I talked to him at halftime and he said that it's twisted. He kind of rolled on it himself there on the tackle, but he's limping still, it's taped heavily, but he's gonna be okay. But anyway, his touchdown pass to Waugh gave the Timberwolves a 6-6 tie. Their extra point sailed wide right. Very difficult to tell from this angle, but I guess it did, and there's where we stand. It's 6-6. The Timberwolves will receive the kickoff to begin the second half. They'll be moving right to left across your radio dials, and you're listening to the rebroadcast here on the Skunk FM following the Giants game. Game taking place Saturday, September 1st here at St. Bernard's home field. Beautiful day, great game so far. Not a lot of scoring, but typically the Timberwolves are known for their defense, and so far today, they've done a good job. So here's the kickoff as Pimental will kick it now to the Timberwolves to begin the second half. Taken by Waugh, he's at the 15 to the 20, to the 30, across the 30, and tackled at about the 37 yard line. So the Timberwolves will have decent field position as we begin the second half. First and 10, the ball at their own 37 yard line. 12 minute quarters in high school football. Lindy Peters with you here, streaming on Mendocino TV and rebroadcasting on the Skunk FM, your sports leader. I want to thank our studio engineer, John Rio. He does a great job putting these games together to get them on the air, and uh, it makes me look good. And our thanks to Terry Vaughn from Mendocino TV. You can say the same things about him. Here we go. First play of the second half for the Timberwolves. Ashby on the pitch. It's fumbled, and it's still on the ground. It's loose. It's picked up by the Crusaders. Travis Weiss gets the fumble recovery, and that was just a bad exchange that time as Ashby never quite got it to Jacob Richard. And that's not the place you want to turn the ball over, your own 31-yard line. Well, I guess it could be worse, but the Crusaders now with a golden opportunity, having just kicked the ball off. One play later, they've got the ball first and 10 due to a Fort Bragg error at the Timberwolves 31-yard line. Mello, two backs behind him, man split either side. Rolls out to his right. He's got some pressure this time. He throws, nice zing on the ball, but short of his intended receiver that time, Pimental. Was the intended receiver, it's incomplete. Good pass rush that time, Reed Monson. Herion also in there, putting some pressure on the quarterback, Mello, that time. Most of the throws so far from the Crusaders have been from the rollout. And Mello is a good runner, too. He's scored their only touchdown, so he can throw and he can run. This time a man splits right, a man splits left, back split behind him in the backfield. Mello straight drop back this time, getting pressure from Richards. His throw is knocked as Waugh makes a good hit that time and Pimental misses the pass good coverage that time still a little high on the pass but good pass rush from Jacob Richards that time forced Mel to get the ball off early setting up third and ten so two plays clock stops each time and uh, net result is no yardage it's going to be third and ten 11.34 to go we've only played 26 seconds here in this third quarter Pimental splits way out here to the right for the Crusaders. Man split out left, far side, tight end on the right side. Mello throws it over the middle and the pass is tipped and an amazing catch. A juggling catch by Rolo Oliveris that time. That ball was tipped and it bounced off his stomach back into the air and he grabbed it and snagged it for a completion, but it's short of the first down. It's gonna be third or fourth down and five now. The ball at the 25 yard line. They have to get to about the 21. Mello looks at the play on his wristband, barks it off to his teammates. We've got a man split left, a man split right as the Crusaders set up here. Third quarter, tied 6-6. There's the give. 
And the man is going to be short of the first down, I think. Nice play that time. Defensively is Jeffries. Richards were there to greet him, and he is, in fact, short of the first down. A big fourth down play for the Timberwolves defense. I thought maybe they'd put the ball in the air after they started that drive, but they chose to keep it on the ground that time. And uh, Ginevro was uh, stopped short of the first down. The Timberwolves take over on downs, first and 10, at their own 23-yard line. 10.53 to go, third quarter, 6-6 six, six tie. Lindy Peters here on the Skunk FM rebroadcast of this game and MendocinoTV.com, streaming the video. Hope you're enjoying the game. It's a good one. Palmer splits out right, wall left, first down, Timberwolves. Ashby at quarterback, backs are in the eye formation. There's the give, second man coming through. That's Smith, and he is stopped in a flag after he picked up maybe two yards to 25-yard line. That flag came into either a face mask or a holding area there at the tail end. Let's see. And it's the official's going to talk to the Timberwolves, so it's going to be against St. Bernard's as they start walking backwards. I don't have a stat sheet and a stat person with me for these games, but uh, penalty yardage, certainly in both the JV game and varsity game, I think is, has favored the Timberwolves, to be sure. And there's been several of these face mask penalties in both games, junior varsity and varsity. We, of course, are only carrying the varsity game for you. The JVs, by the way, lost. St. Bernard's beat Fort Bragg 8-6 to in a really good football game. Only the extra point at the end. The Timberwolves have got a touchdown the JVs at the end of the game, but they couldn't get in the extra point and lost it 8-6. to All right, here we go. First down for the Timberwolves. There's a give. That's Smith, right side, spinning around and stopped for no game. That face mask, even though it was a five-yard penalty, was an automatic first down, so that was actually a first down and three for the Timberwolves at their 30-yard line, but I don't think they got anything that time, so it's going to be second down and about three. Smith, more of an outside threat, although he's got the speed to pop through that hole quickly, but the inside running so far has been more successful with Richards in this game against the stout defense by the Crusaders led by Mano Tanovasa, the big down lineman. So it'll be second down and short. The ball at their own 30 for the Timberwolves. Ashby back and sack. That looked like they were setting up a draw or a screen play, and somebody's down holding their knee for the Timberwolves. And they're slowly getting up. I think that's Alex Espinoza, and he's limped a couple of times as he limps back to the huddle. So it's now going to be third down and about five as they lost three yards. Almost looked as though that was setting up a screen or a draw, as though they were letting the linemen come in that time to set something up, but before they had a chance offensively to get that playoff in a positive direction, the defense in there quickly dropped Ashby for a loss. Ashby did twist his ankle. He's not on all horsepower out there right now. His right ankle is heavily taped. Richard DeLone setback. Smith now splits out left. There's nobody on him as they try and get the snap off. And Ashby fumbles the snap. Well, and there's a penalty flag. And it's a fumble, and the Crusaders apparently have the football. That's, that fumble, though, may have been negated by a penalty flag. So let's see what's going on here. The official threw the flag, the linesman on the far side. And the near side, so two of referees saw the same thing, apparently. And it's a legal procedure call against the Timberwolves, and it is refused. And that, in fact, was a fumble, and it's first down. And the Timberwolves have fumbled the ball twice on each possession here. And each time, the Crusaders have had it in great field position. They stopped them the first time with 8.53 to go in the third quarter, a 6-6 tie. Crusaders have it first and 10 after the fumble recovery at the Timberwolves 23-yard line. Mello at quarterback, two backs behind him. The give is to Ginebra. He's tackled by Richards that time, but not before he picked up a good five yards. Across the 20 down to the 18. Second down and five. 6-6, 8.43 to go third quarter. Crusaders and Timberwolves here as it's a no huddle offense and they're trying to line up quickly now. The Crusaders on offense. Mello looking to the sidelines, gets the play. Well, he didn't get it off that quickly. He gives to the first man through, and he is stacked up and dropped immediately. Arian was in there 
Right down by number 22, Jacob Richards. So it's going to be second down at about five. The ball is about the 17-yard line. I make that third down and five. I'm sorry, the ball about the 18-yard line. So another big play for the Timberwolves. And you might say a big play for the Crusaders if you're rooting for St. Bernard's. Two men split out left this time. Pimentel in the slot. A man outside of him. Baxter split behind Mello. Give to Genevra. And he's got good yardage, a first down across the eight yard line to about the seven yard line where it'll be first and goal for St. Bernard's here. 7.42 to go, clock stops, chains get moved. So I'm sorry, the ball's at the 12 yard line, not, not inside the 10. They mark it at the 12 yard line where he's down, so it's going to be first and 10, the ball at the 12 yard line. Bello, Pimentel splits out to the right. Two backs behind him, double tight end formation. And there's the give to Genebra, and Genebra is tackled by Jeffries that time at about the 10 yard line. He didn't get more than a couple, started at the 12, may have gone inside the 10 to about the 9, so it's going to be second down at about 7. Again, the Crusaders can get a first down inside the 5 yard line, down at about the 3. 6 6 tie, 7 uh, 28 to go here, third quarter. I'm Lindy Peters on the Skunk FM, rebroadcasting Timberwolves football has returned, thanks to the Skunk here and MendocinoTV.com. Second down, at the nine, Mello, man split left, Pimental split out here to the right, Jennebra, the lone back, and the fake, rolling left, throwing, man is open in the corner, overthrown. Good coverage though that time by Brandon Palmer, although Bean did have him beat by a couple of steps, but the ball was overthrown and there's a penalty flag. Last week there were a lot of penalties when the Timberwolves beat McKinleyville at Timberwolves Stadium there under the lights. And this is the first time, as I mentioned last week, that the Fort Bragg Timberwolves have ever had two football games before Labor Day. And I know a lot of you might be enjoying this game because today is part of the Paul Bunyan Day celebration. As you're listening to the rebroadcast, still going on. This game here is from Saturday, September 1st. All right, it's a penalty against the Crusaders. It's only a five-yard penalty, but every yard counts when you're down in the red zone on defense. The ball comes out now to the 15, where it's going to be second down and 13. On the Fort Bragg 14 yard line. This time, Shed Bean splits way out here to the right. Pimentel is split left. Tight end on the left side, strong side left. There's a flanker out there, too. Mello fakes a pitch left, rolls to his right, looking for Bean. He's getting pressure. He throws, and Pimentel makes the catch as it comes across the field from the left side formation and makes the catch, or it's Oliveris, I'm sorry, inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. It's going to be third down. They didn't gain a lot of yardage on that time, but again, a nice throw on the run by Christian Mello. So it's going to be third down and about seven. 6.31 to go here in this third quarter. A 6-6 tie as the Crusaders are trying to get in to the end zone. The Timberwolves are trying to stop them. Third down play now. Inside the 10-yard line. Mello with his back split behind him. Gives to the first man. No, he keeps it. A little belly option fake. He's got it rolling around left. He's got close to the first down. He's going to be short. It's going to be fourth down at about the four-yard line. They need two for a first down. They'll need about four for a touchdown, and it's going to be fourth down. And in a 6-6 tie, this is a crucial spot in the game. The quarterback, uh, Christian Mello, limping a little bit, as is Logan bon Bongio, also uh, limping a little bit. He's the up man in the backfield, so it's going to be fourth down. Call it a long two or a short three. And it's all the way down inside the five-yard line at the four. Mello gives. Ginebra got the first down. On the left side, close to the first down. I believe. Didn't get in the end zone for sure, but he might have a first down, and that set up first and goal at the probably the one yard line. But let's see. First and goal. It is first and goal. Christian Mello favoring his left leg quite a bit. You can see it on the MendocinoTV.com probably, but on the radio, I'll describe it for you in our rebroadcast that he's not going at full strength, but he's got his team down first and goal up to two. Genebra and Bongio in the backfield. 
It's a keeper. And Mello has... Mello right at the middle. Well, his teammates think he has it, but the officials have not given the signal for a touchdown. 5.07 to go, third quarter. There's the call. A little bit of a delay on that touchdown call, but the official just raised up his arms and gave us the signal. It's St. Bernard's 12, Fort Bragg 6. 5.05 to go in this third quarter. What could be of more interest is each quarterback seems to be limping a little bit right now. Mello is walking around in front of us, definitely favoring his leg. It's his left leg, whereas uh, he's grabbing his calf. Whereas uh, Tyler Ashby for the Timberwolves also twists his ankle. Here's the extra point. The spot's down. The kick is blocked. It's no good. It's no good. And the score with 5.05 to go third quarter is neither team able to get an extra point thus far. It's Crusaders 6, the Timberwolves. I'm sorry, the Crusaders 12, Timberwolves 6. Fortnite Timberwolves 6. We'll take a little break here and come back and pick up the action here with 5.05 to go third quarter. Timberwolves trailing by a touchdown. I'm Lindy Peters for the Skunk at MendocinoTV.com. Former Timberwolf, now head coach of the St. Bernard Crusaders, Jason White has his team ahead 12 to six. Probably give him special satisfaction if he can beat the Timberwolves, although I'm sure he still has a special place in his heart for him as well, but always uh, fun when you got two alumni coaching against each other. Roy Perkins from the Timberwolves still with Fort Bragg across the way. Here's the kickoff from Pimentel. Back to receive it is Smith. He picks it up and goes right up the middle and is dropped across the 35 to 38 yard line. Good stick that time by Pimentel. Kicked the ball off, or I'm sorry, Rolo Oliveras. I get those two mixed up. Pimentel wears 88, Oliveras 81. Similar builds for the Crusaders and this being my first time seeing them. I've mixed those two up a couple of times. So it'll be first and 10 Timberwolves, the ball at their own 37 yard line. 4.58 to go, third quarter. Timberwolves trailing now 12 to six. One thing they haven't taken advantage of, Reed Monson has a pretty good size advantage over the linebacker trying to cover him. They don't feature the tight end a lot in their passing game, but they did at one point in this game, they tried to get it to him and, and pass interference. There's a penalty as the Crusaders jump off sides that time. I don't know if the Timberwolves drew him off sides or not, but all three referees, three of the referees out of four threw their flags. The umpire's gonna straighten it out for us here. It's off sides, in fact, against the Crusaders. So maybe Coach Perkins, a former quarterback, picked something up there the way that their cadence, they, were, they seem to be really firing off the ball and maybe the Timberwolves were giving something away on the on the snap there so that time they drew the Crusaders offside and it's going to be first and five the ball now at the 42. Timberwolves trailing 12 to 6. Brandon Palmer splits out left, Todd Wall splits out right, Richard the up back, Zach Smith behind him as Ashby gives it to Smith. Smith is hit and dropped by the big guy. Once again, Mano Tanavasa makes the tackle. He's been all over the field. And he's got the size. He's a senior, 6'1", 280. He might play beyond the high school level. Certainly uh, community college level. Uh, Got, got the size and, and what I can see the talent to, to, to play at that level for sure. All right, the Timberwolves now second down and seven. The ball at the 45. Ashby, been a quarterback almost the whole game. One play, they took him out on an injury. Gives it to Smith. Smith gets through the hole. Richard, actually a nice kickout block, but it was sealed up nicely by the defense. Bryce made the tackle for the uh, Crusaders. It's only about a two-yard gain. It's going to be third down and about five. Ball at the 42-yard line. The Timberwolves have to get it out to about the 47. Three fifty-seven to go and counting down third quarter. Fort Bragg trailing 12 to six. We'll keep our eye on the clock now as that becomes important here in the second half. Been a close game, well played. Been a few penalties, but overall, second game of the season and these two teams are pretty evenly matched. All right, Wall splits out to the left. He caught a touchdown in this game, the only time the Timberwolves marked the scoreboard thus far. Monson moves over to the right side at tight end. Back to passes, Ashby. He's getting a lot of pressure. Rolling right, he's in trouble. He stops, he looks, he eludes the man. Now he's got an open room. And he throws a step to Smith, and Smith drops the football. 
He might have been best to run a boy. Ashby looked like Fran Tarkenton of old back there as he scrambled around. And then he, I think Smith wasn't really expecting that pass. He thought maybe he'd go look for somebody to block, but instead Ashby threw him the football and was incomplete. So it'll be fourth down, the ball at their own 42. The Timberwolves will punt now as Harrion comes in back in punt formation. Bean goes deep along with Patrick Allen. Uh, Patrick Allen was another number that I had finally picked up at halftime for the Crusaders. He is not listed in the program under that number, so our, my apologies to, again, the Crusaders for not getting the, his name out there. He's played well in this game. He's back for the punt. Harrion gets a snap for the Timberwolves. The kick is away. It's a good end-over-end -end kick, and it takes a Crusaders bounce at about the 25-yard line, bounces back to the 30, where it's down by the Timberwolves, and the Crusaders will have it first and 10, the ball at their own 30. They lead it 12 to 6, 3-10 to go here in this third quarter. Um, good to see how Ashby... Ashby's ankle in that series seemed to be okay for the Timberwolves. He seems to have, and he's back there at safety now, watching him limping still a little bit. Meanwhile, in that last series, quarterback Christian Mello seemed to be limping for the Crusaders, and I watched him walk out there, and a little ginger, but they, both players who are key to their team seem to be okay. All right, Mello gives. Nice move by Ginobra, and he is tackled after Mello slipping one tackle. Brought down by number 54, Jeff Francis. Francis made the tackle after about a four-yard gain, and it'll be second down and six. Ball at the 34-yard line, just, well, actually about the 35. Francis, who didn't play in the opener against McKinleyville, has done a good job. He's seeing his first action here in this game today. 2.37 to go, third quarter, 12-6 St. Bernard's. They have it second down at their own 35. There's a pass. Mello gets it out to his man who's open. That's Bean. Bean stiff arms a man on the left sideline, and a penalty flag comes in. Probably going to be a face mask against the Timberwolves as he gets it out to midfield. So the officials talk it over. Now, if, if uh, Bean stiff-armed the Timberwolves defender in the face mask, you, you can stiff-arm, but you can't grab the face mask on offense either. But it looks to me as though it's going to go against Fort Bragg, the way they're talking there and holding the football. Ball right at midfield. Personal foul, Personal face foul. mask, and it is against Fort Bragg. And that is probably the correct call. Usually it's the defender who's guilty of that infraction. Is it a five yard or more? It's the 15 yard variety and that's not good. That'll take the ball from midfield all the way down to the 35 yard line where it'll be first to 10 for St. Bernard's. Leading 12 to six, 2.25 to go third quarter. We're rebroadcasting this game on the skunkfm.com and you're watching it streaming video on mendocinotv.com. I'm Lindy Peters along with Terry Vaughn up here in the luxurious broadcast suite at St. Bernard's. Mello gives to Ginobra, and he is popped by Francis right at the line of scrimmage as Francis came up to say hello that time from his middle backer spot. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. The clock now continues to move with the ball kept on the ground by St. Bernard's. Again, they're getting the call in from the sideline, and they don't huddle. In a traditional way, they wait to get the play. They look at their wristbands, see what it is, and get set to go. And you know, this takes a lot of discipline at this level. So many things can go wrong in high school football. Uh, very sophisticated offense for this level. Credit to Coach Jason White at the Crusaders. Three men split out left. This is the formation where they've been rolling right, and he does again, and he's in trouble. And Richards can't quite get Mello as he throws it just before he's sacked and it's picked off. Tyler Ashby intercepted. Mello was wise not to throw that football. Everybody, including Tyler Ashby, knew where it was going. There was one player, he was running out of room, tucked up against the sideline, he let it fly, and Ashby, from his safety position, stepped up and picked it off to stop the Crusaders. Timberwolves have it first and 10 at the 23. The Timberwolves have turned the ball over twice in this third quarter to the Crusaders. Now they get a turnover. Nice play by Ashby that time. 
What the Crusaders have been doing is lining up strong to the left and then rolling to the right. And they've showed a tendency, and the defense that time had seen that play enough that they sniffed it out and set up the interception. All right, here we go. The Timberwolves on offense. Backs at I formation behind Ashby. Crusaders jump. That was uh, Rice that time. Right now? Or, I'm sorry, Logan Bonjo that time who jumped. And so it'll be first and five again. And clearly, the Timberwolves have picked something up on what the Crusaders tendency is on the snap and that's the second consecutive series to start with a five yard offside penalty all right the Timberwolves bring it up first and five the ball shy of their own 30 at about the 28 yard line 119 to go third quarter there's the give to Smith Smith dances his way across the line of scrimmage and is gang tackled at about the 30-yard line, it's going to be second down and maybe two-yard gain. Second down and three. One o two to go, third quarter. 12-6, St. Bernard's leads. Under a minute to go now as the clock continues to tick down after that running play. Timber was trailing here. Going to have to come back at this one. They had to come back last week and beat McKinleyville, and they did. 14-7 to the score on that one. But they're behind now, 12 to 6. Ashby with Palmer split left, two men split right. Backs are in the I formation. Richards, the up back. There's a keeper by Ashby as he sneaks his way across for a first down to the 37 yard line. That's about the only way you get by Tono Vasa, the big guy, because he's kind of in a gap position on defense, and all you got to do is follow your center, get by him, and there's usually four or five yards there. And with Ashby's open field running ability, although he's kind of a bum wheel, he might be able to break that. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did at some point. Maybe not today, but at some point in the season if they continue to try and run that play. So it's first and 10 Timberwolves trailing 12-6. This, they probably won't get this play off here as the clock's about to go in the third quarter. Five, four, three, they get it off. It's another keeper by Ashby. He gets around the right side. He's got some room and there's the quarter and he's flipped over that time by Bean on the tackle right at the uh, 45 yard line. And that's the end of the third quarter. The score, the St. Bernard Crusaders 12, the Fort Bragg Timberwolves six, 12 minutes of football left. The Timberwolves are gonna have to come back. Can they? Stay tuned and find out. We'll be back after these messages for the fourth quarter.